Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and welcome to my Better Late Than Never review of the Droid Turbo by Motorola. So in case you haven't noticed, Motorola has been kind of killing it this year in 2014. They had one of the most liked wearables of the whole year. Uh, they had one of the best somewhat small phones of the whole year. They had one of the best budget phones of the whole year. And they had one of the best big phones of the whole year. And their latest release here in the Droid Turbo, or the Moto Max on some other carriers, is actually, I think, one of their best experiences yet. So essentially, the Turbo offers the same software experience as the Moto X. And I talked a lot about this in the Moto X review, about how Motorola is sticking to near stock Android to give quick updates, and are just adding a few features on top to enhance the experience. So the Turbo does this too, and it's on KitKat right now, but fingers crossed that it'll be updated to Lollipop very soon. And the other software difference really is that it has some droid specific widgets, some ringtones and wallpapers, but that's basically it. So to best describe this phone, I'm going to give you all the ways that it's different from the 2014 Moto X. And the first way it's different is the build quality and materials. So right off the bat, what you're looking at here is the black material called ballistic nylon. And there's actually two choices in materials, ballistic nylon or Kevlar. Kevlar comes in red and only has a 32 gigabyte version. Uh, it looks a lot smoother, but honestly also a little bit slipperier, uh, even though I haven't held one to determine if that's true. But the ballistic nylon here is much more textured. In fact, it's more textured than any other phone I've held in recent years. It is a super 3D woven pattern, kind of like carbon fiber, but much thicker. Uh, it's actually so thick that sometimes it catches lint and dust or whatever is in your pocket around stuff near the camera and the Motorola logo, which I hate, but I still prefer having that a uh, little bit of texture over something totally smooth on a phone that's curved like this. Also, bonus, there is no Verizon tramp stamp anywhere on this phone. Props to that. So overall, the Turbo is really well built like previous droids, and it's, it feels really durable, really solid to hold in the hand. And it has some slight curving, like I said, near the edges that make it feel less like a brick. And also the edges of the glass are curved a bit as well, so the corners aren't sharp. And the power and volume buttons are both textured. Also, fun fact, the SIM card tray sits behind the volume keys, so you actually have to remove the volume buttons to change your SIM card. But overall, this thing is built like a tank. And speaking of curved glass, that brings us to number two, and that's the display on the front. The Droid Turbo is rocking a 5.2 inch Quad HD display, so 2560 by 1440 resolution at 565 pixels per inch. And it's an OLED display, and it's razor sharp. So basically what I'm saying here is it rivals the Note 4 for one of the best screens on any phone. And we're not just saying that because of the number. It's great. It gets really bright. It has awesome colors, uh, very deep blacks because it's OLED. It doesn't color shift nearly as much as the Nexus 6 when you dim it all the way. And overall, it's a beautiful panel for using the OS, web browsing, uh, using apps, taking photos, videos, watching YouTube, whatever. Actually, the Turbo is one of the first phones I got to use the new YouTube app on, which let me watch videos in freaking 1440p. So it looks really super crispy. Now, a lot of people will have complaints that Quad HD is just too much on a phone or even unnecessary. We keep hearing that as it could take a hit on battery life. So let's just jump right into that. Number three is the battery. Now the Turbo has a 3,900 milliamp hour battery, 3,900 milliamp hours, that's massive. Uh, so you can see it's not exactly a thin device. It's 11.2 millimeters thick, and it's got some curves, you know. There's no dimple on the back anymore. It's just a big, flat battery in the back. And inside, the Snapdragon 805 and Adreno 420 are more than capable enough to run this software smoothly on the Quad HD display. So this combination of hardware has the Droid Turbo lasting still a long time on battery. Now, it doesn't last longer than the best of the 1080p phones out there, as you'd expect, uh, despite having a huge battery but it is pushing extra pixels and it gives you an awesome media experience for an extra long time. So five and a half hours of screen on time is what I get all the time on this when I'm usually getting about six on the OnePlus One, which is probably the best of any 1080p phone. So that's really good for Quad HD and it's actually the best battery life I've gotten out of any Quad HD phone, including the Note 4 to date. So that's super impressive. Obviously, if you have a 1080p display on the front, it would last even longer but I think this is a nice trade-off and it's a pretty good balancing act. And I'm very impressed once again with the battery life of a Motorola smartphone. Now the last major change for the Droid Turbo versus the Moto X is the new camera. The Turbo's rocking an impressive 21 megapixel camera with dual LED flash. And let me tell you, it is a huge improvement over the Moto X. And it's actually the best camera Motorola has ever put in a phone. Not just because of the number, 21 megapixels, but it's actually a really good camera. Great sensor, sharpness is on point as you would expect. Colors and dynamic range are decent. 
It's not over sharpened or over processed like say a Galaxy S5 or Note 4 photo, but the images you get out of it look pleasing. It takes 4K video and it's a really high quality, relatively noise free image in anything but the worst lighting. Uh, so overall, when you take a step back and look at all the changes between the Droid Turbo when you compare with the Moto X, pretty much everything I've mentioned here is an improvement. The camera is better, the battery is bigger, the display is sharper and better looking. I mean, everything seems like it's taken a step forward and that's why I say the experience of the Droid Turbo is top notch. The biggest disappointment actually on the Turbo for me was the speaker on the front. Now it is a front facing speaker and I love talking about those and how great they are, but it's only one at the top of the phone and it's just a small driver on the left hand side corner. It's not a big old speaker like the grill might imply it is. Uh, and it didn't sound very good at high volumes at all and you lose that on the stereo audio when the phone is sideways. But even so, it, I'd still take it over any rear facing speaker. So that's it, it's the Droid Turbo. If you're on Verizon, it's pretty much between this and the Note 4 for best phone you can spend your money on. Uh, so Motorola really hit the nail on the head here and I don't really think you can go wrong between the two. But if we're placing bets on which one gets Lollipop first, I'll put my money on the Motorola phone. So there you go guys, that's been it. If you enjoyed this quick video review, feel free to hit that thumbs up button below. And also there's a subscribe button below so you can be one of the first to see the next video coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.